Uh, hey YouTubers, uh, my name is Connor McDaniel and I'm an avid Vim fanboy and I was playing around with some stuff in Vim today and just thought up a little idea that you might find helpful so I wanted to share it. Um, I think most people are familiar with uh, what I call text motions. I'm not sure what their actual name is but if you go to help or just H, that's what I usually do, inner word there's a there's a list of text objects. We call them text objects. Yeah, so you can do help text objects, and it has a list here. This a word, which would mean like a round word, inner word, around capital words, which just means everything in between the spaces, or out actually out around word would. Uh, include the spaces. Inner word would not include the spaces. Sentence, paragraph, square bracket, you know, curly bracket, parentheses, greater than, less than, tags. You know, a lot of useful text objects. And most people use these pretty commonly like to get inside of a string. So if I'm sitting right here, I can do CI double quote and that will type something else. And that's really handy but occasionally you'll run into you want to get in between something that you know, with the same sort of functionality but it's not a supported text object so as an example a lot of times people who code in Ruby a lot will use the each do iterator and you might want to get inside of these uh, inside of these bars or pipe symbols or whatever you want to call them. But there's a couple ways to do that. You know, even without the text object, sometimes it can be quicker just to do something like CB, or if that wasn't there, it was in the middle, I could do BCE. If I wanted to do an around, I could do capital B, capital C. You know, there's there's solutions, but you might just want some consistent consistency. Um, for a different example, like say I had in VimScript or PHP or something like that, I had a string connected to a variable, connected to a string, connected to another variable, or something like that. And I wanted to get inside of these two periods. But if I do CI period, it's not going to change inside of them. So it might be helpful to extend your objects to include extra stuff. Um, the last one that I thought up, there might be others out there, but like when you when you uh, export a path a lot of times you'll have like you know some directory colon some other directory colon etc or etsy in this case and you might want to get inside of these colons to change a directory right but if i do ci colon nothing happens and you want to extend you want to extend these text objects, so I just wrote a little function to do that. Uh, one one way that most people tend to solve this problem, or I've seen, they'll do like in you know, remap ci like colon for example, since we just talked about that one, and then you can like you can go back to the previous colon, and then you can change to the next colon, yeah, something like that. So if I save this and you know, then I have something that has colons in it. I can do ci colon and it'll change in between them. Because what it's doing is it's going capital T colon, so it's coming to this point, and then hitting C, and then 2 colon, which is, you know, until the next colon. So that's nice. Um, but then you want to add, you know, you want to add the around colon as well. Then you can do F. You know, and then lowercase f to accomplish that. But you know, then you want it you want it for visual mode, so of course you have to change this to, to visual mode. Uh, uh, actually, you know, I want it for delete mode too, so let's do that. Um, oh yeah, I for, almost forgot. We want it for yank mode too. So let's do that. You know, and that's fine. But once you start adding maps for this and for bar and for uh, what was the other one? Uh, 
period, you know, you're gonna have like a ton of lines in you know, as you extend it, it'll just continue to grow, which is fine. You know, some people, my VimRC is obviously quite large, 462. I've seen much larger than that. But I want to just teach you some Vim script real quick, a way that you can automate, automate this. Um, what I did is I just, I used a little for loop. And uh, Vim script has, uh, has lists, which are kind of like hashes, and dictionaries, which are like dictionaries. Um, so you can create a dictionary, like let's say we'll create a dictionary called pairs, and I'll put something like um, put something like a colon, right? And its pair will be a colon. So like if I if I was doing this for an in in text mo like a text motion that already exists, something like this, right? The, the key would be the beginning of it, of the text I want to match, and the value would be the end of the text I want to match. In the colon sense, it, it's the same across the board, so they're both going to be the same. Um, and this is a dictionary. You can actually you can continue this dictionary on, so I could do period as well. Um, you can also break this onto new lines like this. So something like that. Um, and for bar is actually a special character, so you have to use Vim's special way of recognizing bar. Um, but it's kind of an exception, because Vim script actually uses bar for something. So, so we'll put bar in there too. Uh, so now I want to iterate through and set up those maps I did, um, which I'm going to get back there and get those maps. We'll go back to what I had and we'll paste the maps in. So I want to create these maps for everything in the dictionary, right? So what I can do is in VimScript when you want to include a variable in a command like this, just use exe. So do execute command and that will make it you know, act more like a string. Um, we can surround it, you know, with quotes like this. And then if we want to include a variable, all we need to do is, like I was showing you earlier, connect it with dots. So we could do like key right here, and then we could do key for the first one, and then value for the second one, like that. No, we don't need this. So something like that, right? So let's undo. Um, let's just do. We'll do G and then go to the colon. S key like that. Go to the next colon. Dot it. Next colon. Dot it. Uh, FY, something like that, S value. And then we don't need any of this. So delete that. Oops, didn't mean to save. Okay. So now we got all our maps with key and value. So we'll end our for loop. And to cycle through this dictionary with keys and pairs, you can do it like this for key pair in items of pairs. So this will cycle through all of these just like that. Undefined variable value. Oh, I did key pair. <laughs> Meant to do key value. So I'll save that. So now if you have an example with colons in it, and I do CI colon, it'll get in between them. Or if I change those to bars, and I do CI bar, it'll get in between them. So I just thought I'd share that with you, and then as you're, you know, moving along in your code and you see something you want extended, you just add it to the pair list, and these maps will automatically be created for you. So, cheers!